By the climax of the story, Rasputin finds himself standing in the rubble of what used to be Thorny Towers. A psychic death tank operated by Coach Oleander attempts to crush him. After the tank is destroyed and it looks like victory is achieved, brain sneezing powder is unleashed, causing Raz's brain to be removed. Luckily, he's able to use telekinesis and throw his own brain into the tank along with Oleander's. At this point, their minds start to synchronize. In the dark area, a representation of Rasputin's caravan and the coach's happy meadow meet. As a result, their individual traumas bleed together to form a chimeric mental world known as the Meat Circus. As is usual, we must pause here and get one quick term out of the way before diving into the level. That is a word that describes both the nature of this mental world and the final boss of the game, an egregore. While the word has its roots in ancient Greek and Oriental cultures as well as having appeared in the Book of Enoch, the modern use of the word was coined in the 19th century by the French occultist Elvis Levey. Egregores are a representation of a group mind that focuses on a single point. While Rasputin and Oleander have unique mental worlds, the Meat Circus is an egregore of their shared mental state. Examples of this are urban legends, cultures, corporate logos, religions, or a nation's flag. They are symbols that a group consciousness focuses on. These symbols can be entities as well. In the Book of Enoch, the term egregore is used to describe angels. This refers to both faithful and fallen angels, as egregores are morally neutral and can be good or evil. While there is more to say on this topic, let's get into the story and return back later. In the opening scene, Oleander appears as a young child rather than his fully grown self. Being the first character in the game to appear as a child, one of the first questions should be, why? As confirmed by the original Psychopedia page that was run by Double Fine, young Oli is intended to be Morso's inner child. As opposed to the war-torn landscape of basic braining where he appeared as a fully grown adult, this place reflects the scars he earned as a child. It is said that our deepest wounds are carried by the child within. Our first task today should be to examine those wounds before breaking down why unresolved traumas that scar our inner child influence every one of us. After Rasputin follows young Oleander into the caravan, he must first travel through a tunnel covered with mental cobwebs, a clear sign that whatever we find on the other side has been repressed. As soon as the music begins to play, we see the world as an amalgamation of Rasputin's memories of the Aquato family circus and Oleander's childhood memories of his father's butcher shop. Throughout the meat circus, Raz must protect Oli and his rabbit as they run from various dangers, reflecting his most deep-rooted fear. In the mental vault, it is shown that as a child, Oleander enjoyed playing with the bunnies. As a butcher, his father took one and killed it in front of him. From this point forward, Oleander's inner child was repressed into his happy meadow, a place that's safe from the butcher. However, this happy meadow was discovered at the start of the mental world, giving the child no safe place to hide. Earlier, the question was posed, why does he appear as a child? After this traumatic event, the innocent part of him was lost, hidden away. In the psychological sense, he disassociated from the child. In shamanic terms, he experienced a phenomenon known as soul loss. If a child with a passion for art is forced into the family business of medicine, they will lose a part of their soul in the process. Your dreams and desires become locked away. In order to function in the world, sometimes we disassociate from our authentic self in order to avoid pain, to be accepted, and to be loved. Further details about the exact process he goes through is found in the LiPo backstory document. Again, I want everyone to keep in mind that this information is not in the game and should be considered semi-canon at best. However, it does an amazing job at fleshing out themes relevant to his characterization. Oleander was the youngest of three brothers. His first name, more so, meaning a small piece or fragment, is a cruel name placed upon him, as it relates to his short stature. This went unnoticed, as in his head, he was just as big and strong as his older brothers. His self-image changed after the incident with the rabbit, however. The conversation he had with his father before the bunny's death was traumatizing to him. Before reading the quote, we must keep in mind that at that age, Oleander was first developing his ability of zoolepathy, the ability to understand and speak to animals. He felt firsthand the fear the animal went through during the following scene. Then a dark shadow cast over them, and the fun came to an abrupt stop. Mori looked up to see his dad standing over them. The boy was terrified that he was in trouble, but Butch explained it was alright. 
Just don't get attached to that little guy, he advised. But Daddy, he's a special bunny. He can do tricks and... He can't do nothing but suck up feed. He's a runt. A what? Smallest of the litter. Can't sell him for meat. Can't sell him for fur. Good for nothing, and that's why nobody wants a runt. So what do you do with him, Daddy? Butch picked up his cleaver. What do you think? We feed him to the pigs. In that moment, not only was Mr. Bunny slaughtered in front of him, but the inner child of Oleander went into hiding in order to avoid the butcher's cleaver. More so, Oleander was the runt of his family's litter. And if runts are good for nothing, would he be fed to the pigs as well? From that moment forward, he worked himself to be more useful than his siblings. He did three times the chores, woke up early and stayed up late, doubled his study time, and did the dishes every night. To quote from the document, at school, Maury drove himself with an unheard of discipline for a young boy. He scheduled his time with the complicated chart system. He asked the teacher for extra credit work. He did every extracurricular activity that was available. He started clubs, he organized guest speakers, he ran for class president and treasurer. He graduated top of his class and could have gone to the college of his choice. As we see in the mental vault way back in basic braining, college was not his goal, however. Oleander attempted to join the military. Since his father, Butch Oleander, was a former Marine, this was another attempt to avoid seeming worthless in his eyes. However, due to his height, he was kicked out of every recruiting office. He was always told the same thing. Not big enough. Can't drive a tank. Can't jump out of a foxhole. Can't do nothing but suck down rations. Once again, even though he crafted his entire identity to distance himself from the runt of a child he was, even as an adult, they told him he was not good for anything but sucking down rations. The words of his father, saying how a bunny was only good to suck down feed, echoed as the recruiters dismissed him. After this, he was recruited by the Psychonauts. However, they did not deploy him due to his aggressive tendencies, a maladaptive coping mechanism to disassociate from the runty and fearful child. In an article on soul loss by Matteo Soul, it is said that there's a reason why we identify with the ego and disconnect from the soul in the first place. It's a survival mechanism. We must develop a sense of self, a separate sense of me, in the world in order to function. But simultaneously developing an ego, which is basically one big defense mechanism to ensure that we are loved, accepted, taken care of, avoid pain, etc., means we lose touch with the authentic essence of who we truly are, the soul. Oleander lost touch with his authentic self. The more the child hid from the butcher, the more his identity became shaped around gaining his father's approval. Out of a mixture of fear of the butcher and desire to please his father, young Oleander crafted himself into a person who was not worthless like the runt of the litter. In this manner, he would be psychologically safe from the cleaver. But the fear never left him. In the basic braining world, we see this influence. Cleaver figments can be found, flowers made of meat erupt from the ground, and if clairvoyance is used on the rabbit, they see Raz as a butcher holding a bloody tool. The room where he kept the plans have white rabbits adorned all along the walls. In the Brain Tumbler experiment, the runt bunny acts as Rasputin's guide and takes him to the tower where Dr. Lobato resides. This small bunny is linked to Oleander's childhood, and it is possible that it is here because a part of his mind is trying to help. The enemies in the meat circus are twisted versions of the bunnies that have been pushed through a meat grinder. While sleeping, Mori can be heard begging with his father to not hurt the bunnies. Papa! No! No! Oh, Papa! Oh, Mr. Bunny! Despite being an adult now, the scars carried from his inner child bubble up to the surface on occasion. Repressing something rather than allowing it to heal causes the scar to become infected and grow more itchy as time goes on. By the time he was the coach of Whispering Rock and he received news that his father had passed away, something snapped in him. He would never be able to prove himself to his dad anymore. So instead, he decided to prove something to the world. Being stationed over the Citanium deposit, he became more unstable and began to collaborate with Dr. Lobato. At this point, the only solution is to de-escalate the situation. Rasputin enters his mind and performs the shamanistic process of soul retrieval. To locate, protect and reintegrate Oleander's inner child or authentic self to his conscious personality. To let the frightened little boy know it's safe to come out of hiding. As with most rituals of this nature, Raz will not be a passive observer. 
he will be forced to go through the same psychological turmoil. Taking the role of the medicine man in the soul retrieval mission, if Raz cannot confront and overcome Oleander's demons, he'll be unable to help the coach do it for himself. How can he help someone else overcome their trauma if he is unable to overcome that very same trauma? In this case, Mori's fears of his father mirrors Rasputin's own issues. After confronting Butch the first time, a horrific version of Augustus Aquato arrives. His entire life, Rasputin has been told that psychics are scourges, that they killed and cursed his family. As a result, when his psychic abilities began to develop, the boy believed he was resented for something that he had no control over, that he was hated by his father. Just as Oleander was the runt of the litter, Rasputin was the black sheep of the family. Oleander hid his inner child away in a meadow, while Rasputin literally ran away from home. In this world, the two fathers became a hyperbolic representation of their true self, both portrayed with exaggerated and horrific characteristics that reflect the anxiety and fear the two had when thinking of their fathers. The two merged together as one, becoming the two-headed dad monster. Bosses before now were described as a tulpa or thought form, a manufactured character in our minds such as Boyd in The Dead Mother or Edgar in The Bull. Oleander and Rasputin focused their shared trauma and created an egregore. Unlike the previous versions of their fathers that were separate, this one proves to be too much to handle. Luckily, right before the two-headed monster was created, the ghost that has been calling out to Rasputin the entire level bursts in, revealing itself to be his real father. Augustus, when confronted with a mental representation of himself, is shocked at how his son perceives him. This brings us to one of the most relevant themes in the world. How we imagine people in our heads is not always who they really are. Person perception is the mental process used to form our impressions of other individuals. When meeting a person on the street, we do form snap judgments. The trouble is this can create errors in our mental image of them. Implicit personality theory is a bias one can make of another based upon limited information. Certain traits are linked to others, so we rationalize that if we observe one trait, it means the linked traits are also true. By observing a cardinal trait or dominant personality trait, we make judgments about the rest of the person's beliefs and personalities. Raz heard stories from his father about how psychics ruined their lives. Therefore, he must hate psychics. Since Raz is a psychic, Augustus must hate him. Oleander's father believes runty animals are good for nothing but being used as pig feed. Oleander is a runt among his brothers, so his father must see him as worthless as well. The logical fallacy here is that while the cardinal trait is true, the presumption of the two boys using implicit personality theory is completely false. If Augustus Aquato and Butch Oleander had simply had a conversation with their sons to put their minds at ease, maybe Morso's life would have taken a different path, or Rasputin wouldn't have felt the need to run away from home. While Morso was not lucky enough to have a father to notice that his son was struggling, Augustus did. After tracking him down and entering the meat circus, he gave all of his powers to his son in order to confront the egregore of their shared daddy issues. With the beast defeated, the minds separate. With this experience behind them, both Oleander and Rasputin are able to begin walking the road to recovery. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like as it really does help out the channel. If you would like updates on new uploads, feel free to subscribe or follow me on Twitter. Have a good day and peace be with you all.